Gauguin had hoped to find inspiration in traditional Tahitian art as he had in Brittany. When he found none, he created it himself. He claimed his grasp of Tahitian mythology came from conversations he shared with his mistress, Tehamana. But that was a fiction. She spoke as little French as he spoke Tahitian. To recreate a mythic Tahitian past, he drew from a book on Polynesia published in Paris in the late 1830s. Gauguin transformed accounts of the moon goddess Hina and her son, the earth god Fatu, into carved idols. He includes images of invented deities in his paintings. Gauguin had always treated the visual imagery of other cultures as fair game. In 1889, he'd painted an anguished woman he called the Breton Eve. He modeled the despairing figure on a Peruvian mummy he'd seen in the Trocadero Museum in Paris. The figures in his depiction of women in the marketplace in Papayeti were adapted from Egyptian paintings. He borrowed the pose of his Tahitian Eve from a photograph he had of reliefs in the Buddhist temple of Borobudur in Indonesia. They also inspired the strange vegetation that appears in some of his paintings. His portrait of his mistress includes indecipherable inscriptions, imitations of inscriptions he'd seen on tablets from Easter Island. In Parahiti Marai, meaning there lies the temple. He created a sacred precinct bordered by a fence he invented on the basis of a Marquesan ear ornament he'd sketched in France. The skulls along the top suggest the cannibalistic practices he believed had once been performed there. Photographs he'd seen of sculptures on Easter Island probably inspired the idol on the hillside. Despite his long absences, Gauguin remained in touch with the art world in Paris. He continued to exhibit his new paintings and often gave them Tahitian titles to make them even more exotic to potential buyers. He returned to Paris, but after two years of disappointing sales, Gauguin left again. He stopped in Auckland, New Zealand, on his way back to Tahiti. Auckland was home to a museum with a superb collection of works representing the legacy of the Maori people. The Maori had migrated from Tahiti and other parts of Polynesia to New Zealand centuries earlier. His brief stay in Auckland finally gave Gauguin a chance to see traces of the lost Tahitian art he'd been seeking and inventing. He sketched them on the spot for future use. Back in Tahiti, his sketch of a Maori treasure box inspired his painting of a vase holding sunflowers. East meets West in the mythic imagery that Gauguin invented. He sought parallels between Christianity and the spirituality of other cultures. Ave Maria shows a Tahitian Madonna and child being worshipped by two women inspired by a relief at Borobudur. Gauguin was intent on searching for a spiritual connection that he thought was the essence of humanity. In 1901, Gauguin, now in his 50s, was creatively and physically exhausted. Today I've hit bottom, defeated by poverty and the illness of an altogether premature old age. I will be making a last effort next month by going to live on one of the Marquesan Islands. I think the altogether wild element, the complete solitude, will rejuvenate my imagination and lead to the fulfillment of my talent before I die. He finally settled on the island of Hiva'oa, among the most remote of the Marquesas where, Gauguin hinted in letters, cannibalism was still fresh in the cultural memory of the people. 
he took a local girl as his mistress and built a hut he named the House of Pleasure, which has been reconstructed. The doorway was framed with ornate carvings, echoes of those he'd seen on Maori meeting houses in Auckland. He added an inscription, be in love and you will be happy. For 18 months, he worked at a feverish pace, drawing, painting, and always writing. In barbaric tales, he recalled his old friend from Brittany, Meyer de Hunt. Increasingly homesick, he contemplated a return to Paris with the hope of capitalizing on his growing reputation. His friend, Daniel de Montfri, advised against it. It is to be feared that your return would only derange the growing and slowly conceived ideas with which public opinion has surrounded you. You must not return. Now you are as the great dead. You have passed into the history of art. Weakened by syphilis, Gauguin died in May of 1903 from heart failure at the age of 54. As he'd requested, his most prized sculpture, Oviri, Tahitian for Savage, was eventually cast in bronze and placed on his grave. It stands there still, as enigmatic as the questions he asked himself in his 20-year commitment to painting. Gauguin's achievements as an artist broke the bounds of naturalism and moved painting into a new century. His questions remained unanswered, but for all his guises, schemes, and dreams, Paul Gauguin remained unbowed to the very end. I feel I have been right about art. And if my works do not endure, there will remain the memory of an artist who set painting free. <laughs>